I thank you, Dr. O'Reilly. Uh, as you might have guessed, uh, she and I have debated this topic before uh, during the course of the uh, series of great debates, and I always in, enjoy the opportunity. Um, these are my disclosures again, same disclosures as last time. Um, <clears throat> so maintenance therapy. As a concept, it's new to pancreas cancer. Why now? Because of course we have two drugs that cause cumulative neuropathy and the patients after starting therapy are feeling better than they used to. So they want time off their treatment, which makes sense, or at least off of the most toxic portions of it. Um, and that, that, that is one of the issues that, uh, that comes up. What's the precedent? Of course, colon cancers are precedent. Optimox was the first big study to suggest that chemo-free or chemo-reduced intervals uh, did not impact on survival and gave patients uh, lower toxicity, especially the cumulative toxicity uh, of neuropathy from the oxaloplatin. So um, we definitely have some role for a maintenance therapy. And now that we're getting more active first-line regimens, this is the time to really explore the question. And, and the POLO study, I, I will argue um, that, that they chose the only control arm they could. Um, there was no evidence for uh, maintenance chemotherapy of any form. Um, so a, a standard um, placebo was a very reasonable one. Um, it does create openings, as Dr. Um, O'Reilly mentioned, and I will take advantage of them. So it's a very specialized population. You have to have a germline BRCA mutation not a PLB2 germline, no other somatic mutations, no other mutations in the uh, DNA uh, damage uh, um, profile, um, just a BRCA germline mutation. You already have to be responding or benefiting from platinum-based therapy, and it also means you were tolerating it or you would have come off of it. So the group of patients that went on the study were, uh, were special. Um, and I think that's important when you look at the overall survivals and things like that, not because of the outcomes for, for the elaborate. Um, and of course, you have to be willing to be randomized, which is always a special population. And, and as Dr. O'Reilly mentioned, the outcomes were very good. Um, the issue is the top curve shows a great improvement in progression-free survival. And I will, I will admit there were responses, further shrinkage of tumor by switching patients over to PARP inhibitors but you cannot pry the overall survival arms apart with a crowbar. Um, and that's despite the fact that very few patients received Olaparib um, on the uh, placebo arm as subsequent therapy. So we have one truly completed study I and mean, the Recaparib study is early um, and, and, um, and it definitely um, agrees with the uh, Apollo study thus far. PFS benefit though, not overall survival, it proves that Olaparib has a role. I believe it firmly has a role. Um, crossover happened, but not a lot, like I said. Uh, what does not prove is that you need to be giving the, um, the PARP inhibitor in the maintenance setting. Um, patients rarely stop the Olaparib for toxicity, so I think this is good. However, side effects did happen, and the advantage that you have with chemotherapy is you already know the side effects the patients are having. You've already adjusted the doses to the side effects to make their quality of life that, at least as far as we know, um, more reasonable. So um, Olaparib did have 60% um, grade uh, of any grade fatigue or asthenia. And I point these things out because chemotherapy is in every other week regimen. And the side effects largely happen around the days of chemotherapy, except for the diarrhea, which happens late. Whereas with Olaparib, it's an everyday regimen. So we talk about these as being mild side effects. We talk about them as being tolerable, but we didn't go through these side effects. And the fact is that I would argue that 20% um, patients with any grade uh, vomiting are 20% patients who are not feeling great every day of their lives. And, and that's, that's a real issue. And 35% did have dose interruption, even if they didn't stop the drug. They did have dose interruption. So a third of patients had enough side effects they had to interrupt the dose. So of course, like, like we've mentioned, the issue has to be the control arm. It's not the decision. It was a, it was a logical decision. It, it's that there are other options. Five of you, Lucavorin or Fulfiri would both be options. And again, theoretically, these patients were tolerating those drugs with the addition of oxaloplatin, so they would tolerate those drugs without the oxaloplatin better in theory. Uh, they, um, 
again, the patients have to have a dermal line defect and DNA damage repair. Well, although platinum is the one we talk about the most, it's the uh, uh, probably the best one to interact with a BRCA mutation, irinotecan also causes double-stranded DNA breaks. So it's important to realize that this is another drug that could be very important in this group of patients. Um, remember that they also were a special population with the 3.8 month progression free survival on placebo. So what does polo mean? Clearly, I think there's a role for PARP inhibition in the subset, but more questions are left. Is maintenance really the right setting? There's no overall survival benefit. Although crossover happened, it was not the majority. And so one would think that it's possible to use the PARP inhibitors later on down the line. Um, as, as Eileen mentioned, there'd be some concern if they're more resistant, but there'd be more concern about giving further chemotherapy when they're more resistant. So I'm not sure one versus the other. What would have happened with a different control arm? Would it have one in terms of PFS? I don't know. And there are the other issues of what are the other mutations that would benefit from, from the PARP inhibitor in this setting or any setting. So overall survival, as I said, is great on the trial, but the reasons could include not only, of course, the BRCA mutated uh, patients being susceptible to the therapies, including platinum and, and irinotecan, but also, um, also because we chose a very highly selected group of patients. Um, so I think, I think overall, I think the role of olaparib is proven that there is a great role for it. Whether or not you could use other arms or other treatments such as Fulfiri or even 5 of leucoborin in the maintenance setting are, are excellent questions and I think would be very reasonable to do if you didn't want to switch therapies and risk a whole new slew of side effects. Um, so again, why, why would chemotherapy be a better choice? Again, selecting from the uh, colorectal data, it did work. Uh, they were tolerating their chemo. Um, and like I said, chemo side effects happen around the chemo, not every day. And um, there's um, not a clear enough data set yet, but I think there's evidence, good enough evidence that PARP can still be used at another time point. And ultimately there was no survival benefits. So I would still favor chemotherapy as being a reasonable uh, uh, arm during the oxaloplatin free interval. Thank you.